OK, Ella, as you know, you and I have to make the big decision about in which restaurant we're going to hold our office celebration. Well, we're celebrating 20 years of operation, so I think it has to be a good restaurant, something which will really impress people and make them think better of the company. We do have a budget, though. It's how much? $2,000, and that should be enough for a good meal. Actually, it's $3,000, not $2,000. I confirmed that today. That should be enough for a great meal, then. Well, this is a significant milestone. So, should we go for a buffet meal at a local hotel? All you can eat? Something like that? The Chestfield Hotel has good food. I've eaten there before. Very impressive. Yes, I've got the brochure here. Do you know how much it costs? The full buffet banquet is beyond us, I'm afraid. Yes, but we don't have to get the banquet. They have set meals for cheaper prices. Show me the brochure. What about this? Set meal C is $50 a head, and that's just within our price range. It includes a main meal with prawns, and there's other seafood as well. Look, there's even a seafood platter with crabs, oysters, everything you like. But not everyone likes seafood. Let me see the brochure. Actually, set meal D looks better to me. More meat-based. How much is it? Meal A is $70.00. B is $60 and so on. So D is even cheaper at $45. OK, and we could spend the money we save on other things, such as a lottery present or something. The main meal is lamb, and everyone likes that, right? It comes with soup, dessert, coffee, all the frills that you'd expect. What's the soup? Actually, all the meals come with soup. Meal A is lobster soup, B is prawn, C is clam, but ours is chicken. Ah, oh, I like that. Chicken is simple but tasty. All those seafood soups are not nearly as nice. So, why don't we take meal D then? All right, we've picked the restaurant and meal for this celebration, so that just leaves the time and date to be decided. We need to do it soon. This month is the 20th anniversary, so what about the 14th? 14th? Hmm, but wouldn't it be better to do it after the end of quarter reports are handed in? That way, everyone will feel more relaxed. That's the 18th, after the middle of the month. Good thinking. That's why you're the office manager and I'm not. <laughs> and that leaves the starting time. After work, but not too late, right? Well, any time is fine, I should think. 7pm, 7.30, 8pm. Does it really matter? Not too late, though. 8pm is too late. 7pm might be too early for those submitting the end-of-day accounts. Split the difference, then. Take the middle time. That will please everyone. Sounds fine by me. Let's do that, then. Now, that leaves the minor details. You know, about clothes and what to bring and... Clothes? Isn't this an informal event? Yes, but it is an anniversary and we don't want people in jeans and jogging shoes. We don't necessarily want formal dress, either. I agree. Formal is too... well, formal. Smart casual is better. Let's just say smart casual, OK? OK. And should we allow smoking? Isn't that the hotel's decision? Do they allow smoking? They do. In designated areas, well away from the eating tables. Personally, I hate smoking and would like to ban it completely from this function, but to be reasonable, I think we can just follow the hotel's policy. If they allow it, so can we. OK, that sounds fine. That just leaves... Uh... Whether the guests should bring anything with them? I think it would be a nice idea if everyone bought a... Let me guess. A card, right? A getting-to-know-you card. No, a present. A small present, of course to be put into a large box, and then everyone can reach inside and pull out something. A lucky dip. That should be a good laugh, don't you think? Great idea. Hello. Helen, is it? Yes, that's right. And let me begin by saying that your construction is already causing considerable disturbance to our student body. 
I'm afraid we have deadlines to meet, but you did ask for a timetable. We can certainly try to do the noisiest work at specific times when it least disrupts the students. Good. I've already emailed you about sensitive times of the day. Obviously, our lunch period is the best time for you to do all the noisy work. Yes, and as a result, in that time, we are reserving all the jackhammer and drilling work necessary for breaking up the old concrete paths. So that will be between noon and one thirty p.m. It will result in some delays to us, but not enough to significantly put us behind. So we're happy to do it at that time. The other time you mentioned as favourable for our noisiest work is after five p.m. As you know, due to the deadlines, we work at night to eight p.m. Yes, I see the lights at night when I walk to my car. Well, we can similarly put most of the digging of earth, or in other words, the excavation, to that time, and that work is certainly noisy due to the engines of the earth-moving vehicles. Inevitably, of course, there must be some noise during the day. And I think that the best we can do is concentrate it at one specific time, so that at least you can anticipate it.、Uh, that time will be from 10 a.m. to noon. We've just finished cutting down and sawing up all the trees, so that morning period will now primarily be involved with the pouring of concrete. That must be done early in the day to allow the concrete to harden during the daylight hours. It will involve considerable noise, I'm afraid. Mostly from the trucks and concrete mixers, so expect some racket in those two hours. So, what will happen in the late afternoon? Will it be quiet enough for exam work? I believe so, since in that first hour and a half we'll be having our lunch break, and in the remaining two hours we'll just be making the concrete look nice. You know, removing leaves, broken pieces, and making it all level and flat before it hardens. So the noise will certainly be at a minimum in that period of time. Well, it's good to know this construction activity won't disturb us too much, and I trust it's all worth it. Perhaps you can tell me how this new plaza will look when it's all finished. Can you give me some idea of the final appearance? Oh, it's going to look very nice. For a start, right now we've just got concrete paths, and as you can see, we're breaking that up and removing it, and soon we'll be laying polished stone. Really, stone. And polished too. Yes, it will look very good, nice and shiny, giving a touch of class. The university is certainly spending some money on this. I guess it will be the showcase plaza, especially with a fountain as well in the front corner, and there'll be shops too at the back in that other corner area. Right now, it's just empty space, but soon you'll be able to buy things there, not just from one shop either, but many. I suppose that will help the university draw some income as well. And see that long narrow part on the left-hand side? We had planned to put seating there, but we soon realised that wasn't such a good idea. We thought about a coffee shop, but finally decided that it would be better to have a garden, since there's so much natural sunlight around that area. So that's what we're doing. It should look very nice indeed, particularly when it grows a bit. And after some thought. It was decided to put the seating in the centre of the plaza, since being right in the middle allows everyone to be seen, and everyone to see everything, creating a very fun atmosphere. Along those same lines, that is, in order to create a better atmosphere, we're changing the facade of the buildings facing into the plaza. Right now, there's nothing there, just walls without any ornamentation. We thought that we could either paint them with interesting pictures. Perhaps with modern art or that sort of thing, but then decided to simply hang plants there, in keeping with the natural look of the place. Well, keep up the good work. I'm sure it's going to look wonderful when it's all finished.